In this episode, I'm talking all about sound. I'm going to show you how to capture clean audio. I'm going to show you how you can use Foley to create your own sound effects to use in Premiere, how to sync your audio tracks and how to denoise and clean up your footage right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So before we jump into Premiere Pro, I first just want to give you a few tips on capturing clean sound. It's really important that you capture clean audio because even though Premiere does have some really awesome sound editing features, it's always a really good idea to capture clean audio rather than capturing bad audio and trying to recover that and turn that into good audio. So my first tip to capture clean audio is to stop using the inbuilt microphone on your camera. Your camera may have a microphone built into the camera, but the problem is So my first tip is to get a new microphone. Now you can get the Zoom H1N, that is a low cost alternative to using the inbuilt camera microphone. Or alternatively, you can just grab your phone, put the voice recorder on and just have this close to yourself when you're filming. This will ensure that you get the best possible audio quality and this means you won't have to do loads in the edit to improve your audio. You won't have to clean it up so much because you will have clean audio. It's also really important as well that when you're capturing audio, you're shooting at the right level. If you're recording audio too loud, then the audio is going to clip and it will sound distorted. And if you capture your audio too quiet, then when you increase this in the edit, you're also going to increase the noise floor and that means your audio is going to sound really noisy and ugly in the edit. Of course, you can use denoising plugins in Premiere to try and fix this, but clean audio is always better than repaired audio. So once you're inside of Adobe Premiere and you've got your audio imported, as you can see, this is just a video clip from a different episode. This is me just talking about a specific clip. So in order to denoise this, you first just want to go into the effects tab and then you just want to search for denoise. So you can either search for it in the search bar. So you can go denoise and that will be in noise reduction slash restoration. Or alternatively, you can go into audio effects and then go into noise reduction slash restoration and you'll find it there. Then we're just going to drop the denoise plugin onto our audio file. Now that will appear up here in the effect controls tab. And if you can't see effect controls, then go window effect controls and make sure there is a tick there. Now, once you found denoise, you just want to go into the custom setup, go into edit, and this is the denoise window. So first of all, you just want to focus on where the noise is. So at the moment it's set to focus on all frequencies, but you can target specific frequencies. So if we go over, this is focus on lower frequencies, focus on mid frequencies, focus on higher frequencies, and then focus on higher frequencies again. So let's say the noise that you want to remove is a dull hum in the background. You would typically want to focus on the lower frequencies, but if the noise in the background that you want to remove is a higher frequency, so it's something a bit more high pitched, then you want to select the higher frequencies or you can select somewhere in between. It's completely up to you. And then you've got the amount slider as well. So you can have this to zero and that's not going to do anything. Or you can pull this all the way up to 100%. The problem is with this amount slider though, is if you do this too much, if you increase this too much and there's too much denoising, then unfortunately your audio is going to sound a little bit weird. So let's pull this up to 100. We'll target all frequencies and let me play this back for you. Cut off, as you can see, if I zoom in, I zoom into 150, you can really see it cutting off here and that makes the... So we're starting to eat into the actual audio that we care about at the moment. So let's just pull that down. We'll go to 50. We'll play that back. Look a bit weird. So you can increase the mask feathering to blend that. And that's just See, that sounds great now. Of course, if we pull this all the way down to zero, you'll hear how clean the audio is. But the problem is we're now catching that noise in the background. So this is a juggling act. So feel free to move this to wherever you need to set this to in order to remove the noise, but just try not to take it further than it needs to be because it will start to affect the dialogue that you want to keep. So that is how you remove the noise from your audio inside of Adobe Premiere. Moving on, I'm going to show you how to sync audio tracks inside of Adobe Premiere. Now my quick tip for syncing audio and video and different audio tracks together is to do a sync lap. And a sync clap is essentially doing what a clapperboard is going to do in a professional Hollywood setting. So you just do a sharp 
And when you create that clap sound, there is a visual representation of that sync point, And there is also a sharp point on the waveform that is generated. So all you have to do is just align up the hands touching together and that spike in the audio waveform. And you're going to be able to sync your audio to your video or your audio tracks to your other audio tracks. So here we go. You can see we've got this footage here. And at the very beginning, I do a sync clap like so. So my hands touch and at that specific moment in time, you can see there is a sharp spike in the waveform. Now, if I go to my other clip, you can look for that same specific point. So we'll zoom out. We'll go to the very beginning. And as you can see, we have got that sync clap now generated. So same thing again. So if you've done a sync clap, all you have to do is just cut at this moment. You can go to that first sync clap. And you can cut there. Of course, if you wanted to delete this scratch audio, then all you have to do is right click, unlink and delete all of the channels that you don't need. And then we can just drag this second clip over onto that audio. So we just got to drag that in. And now these two videos are synced up to the audio. You can follow the exact same process. If you're syncing up audio tracks, you just look for that sharp spike and then you just sync up the two audio tracks. Alternatively though, if you've got multiple audio tracks, I'm just going to pinch this one from over here. If you've got two audio tracks and you wanted to sync these up and you didn't have a sync clap, then all you have to do is just select everything that you want to sync. We'll right click, select synchronize, and then you just want to go ahead and sync these up to the audio track. So if your professional audio is on track one, we'll sync this up to track one, or if it's on two, you sync it up to two. Then you just press OK and Premiere is going to analyze that audio and analyze the timing of that audio. And after a few seconds or a few minutes, depending on how much audio you have, Premiere Pro will sync these together and they'll be perfectly in sync. So that's a little bit about the importance of sound design, how to sync your audio and how to denoise your audio. But I'm going to take this further. I'm going to talk about sound design. Now, sound design is really important when you're doing videos, especially if you're doing something montage based. It's really important to pay close attention to your sound design because you can add elements to your audio that will take your video to the next level. Sound and sound design in particular are always overlooked when it comes to video, but paying close attention to your audio and your sound design is really going to help to take your videos to the next level. So one thing that I love to do when I'm creating a sound design for a video is I look at the different video clips that I have on the timeline and I have a look to see what would create what sound. So let's say if there is an underwater section, I would look for some underwater sound and I would either source this online or I could record this myself. Now for larger Hollywood films, you have a Foley artist and a Foley artist is basically somebody that just locks themselves into a room, watches the video back and creates sound effects. It's quite funny as well because Foley artists are so creative and they can really pull an interesting sound out of the most mundane objects. Take this pink hairbrush, for example. If I hold this up to the microphone, it creates a really interesting sound. I can also do some writing sounds. Here I've got a photography clip and I just use this to hold up photography stands. But if we create some sound effects with it, that could be used for something, who knows? Now, when it comes to creating a sound design for your video, it's really important that you have access to high quality sounds. Now, of course, you can record your own Foley sound effects, or alternatively, you can turn to the sound effects pack in the AEG's pack manager because they have some really awesome sound effects in this pack. So we're inside of Premiere and we've got the AEG's pack manager open. If we go into the sound effects free pack, you can see we've got alarms, beatbox clicks, bells, book drops, buttons, chimes, cinematic, clicks, clicks digital, and a whole array of free sound effects here for you. So let's go into cinematic. Let's listen to a few of these. Now those sounds are great and they would make for a really awesome tense cinematic sequence. But if you just wanted something more naturalistic like clocks, you got a clock tick here, or if we go into keyboards, keyboard typing, you've got mouse clicks, music, paper, pencils, pop shapes. 
These whip sounds here, they're really awesome when you add them in underneath a whip transition. It's a great way of bringing your sound design to life. And then of course, there's a whole world of other sound effects here, but if we come out of here and we have a look, there is also a sound effects pro pack available from AE Juice. And this pack is going to give you a whole world of sound effects that you can use in your project to improve the quality of your sound design. Paying close attention to your sound design is really going to help to add character into your video and it's going to help to link your audio and your video and make them feel much more connected. So I know people are always looking for the flashy transitions and some really awesome overlays and cinematic ways of making their videos look incredible, but people always forget that audio is 50% of a video. If your audio isn't great, then unfortunately your video is not going to be great. You could be filming your video on a RED or an ARRI or a really expensive Hollywood camera but if your audio isn't great, then unfortunately it's just not going to look great. So spend the time to focus on, first of all, capturing great sounding dialogue and audio, capturing your own sound effects and Foley sound design. And then of course, marry all of that up inside the edit, clean everything up and create a really nice solid sound design to take your work to the next level. And that just about wraps it up for this episode. So in this episode, we talked about sound design, Foley sound, how to denoise your clips, how to sync your audio. And if you follow all of these tips, then you're going to have great sounding audio and a great sound design in your edit. In the next episode, we're talking about exploring outside of Adobe Premiere Pro and bridging the gap between After Effects, Audition and Premiere.